And so I started uh, looking for a doctor who would consider prescribing those sorts of medicines and finally found one. And I tried that medication and two things. One, it was very difficult to use. It's, it's very strong. And it also takes forever to take action and it's very variable because it goes through your digestive system. Sometimes you, you take it, you don't even notice it, the impact. Other times you take it and it knocks you out. But it did start working on my migraines. So uh, I've been using that for about three years where the whole time has really been trying to titrate the dose to be able to treat the migraine without having all these side effects you get with Marinol. It's very psychoactive. Uh, it, it causes very anxiety and some other things. And it's extremely slow acting. So it makes it very hard to titrate. And um, I've been using that for about three years. Though recently I started really overreacting to it where um, the anxiety from taking it was just so severe, I actually went off it for about three weeks. And that was unfortunate because my migraines came back full blown. I realized that uh, you know I needed to stay on this drug to be able to keep the migraines under control, but I'm not happy about taking it. It's, it's very unpleasant. Um, I have seen a few patients who have uh, used Marinol. Um, they do not report as good of effect as they do with smoked marijuana. Um, as with most of the natural um, substances that are used medicinally, there's usually a lot of different active ingredients. Yeah, it, it increases my appetite, um, it decreases the spasticity of my muscles, um, it decreases the episodes of uh, emotional ability that I have, which is actually a big thing. Um, and it kind of gives me a little bit of energy when I don't really have it, because you get really fatigued with MS, and so it kind of helps with those issues. Um, there are additional areas that other people use it for, and there are plenty of studies that show there's additional documented applications for it. But for my own personal application, when I was smoking it in Arizona, uh, that was the area that we looked at. It was, this is going to actually probably help the best. I have no idea why it was better. All I know is it worked, and I'm thankful that it was uh, available to me at the time. My life is like I'm in a twilight zone. I never know from one day to the next what it's going to be like. I never know if I'll be able to, to eat or, or function or get up and, and walk across the room. I, I no longer socialize like I used to. I miss working. I miss my life. But, but there's, there's, I'll never get it back. You cannot repair the damage of multiple sclerosis. I believe so strongly in this. I, I believe so much. I have a very good friend that died from MS. She weighed only 65 pounds. She was diagnosed six months before me. She died in 1999, just down the road. And there was nothing that they could give her to help her pain and suffering, because all these prescribed marijuana. People had offered her marijuana, but like me, she wouldn't because it was illegal. She didn't want to set a bad example for her children, and she died suffering. And I don't want to go like that, and I wouldn't want anybody to in their final days not to have some relief legally without the, the threat of the DEA busting into their house, dragging them away. You know, I believe, like I said, so passionately about this and anything that I could do on my small part to help someone. So many people have this disease, so many. Some of these treatments cost $20,000 and marijuana is a little plant that could be used so much cheaper. My medication right now, and I'm on nothing that's, that's addictive, is into, I'm gonna say $600 a month. I have, of course, a medical medication card, but that's what it costs. But a, a marijuana, one, it, it'd be so much cheaper. It's more cost effective, and there's no side effects, and it won't kill me, or you, or anybody else that needs to use it legally. Oh yes, my experience really has changed. Uh, my opinion both of marijuana itself and state and federal government. You have to understand when this started out, I really did not believe that cannabis had any use as medicine. I remember back in the 70s, I knew some people who were using it medically. Uh, one guy who had had partial uh, uh, severing of his spinal cord was using it to prevent spasms. And another person was using it for MS to treat, which I now know is uh, neuropathic pain. Now, at the time, I thought it was just, you know, they needed some excuse to use it. I didn't really understand it. And that was really my opinion of marijuana itself until this came up. So I guess, you know, it, it, you have to be exposed to things directly to understand sometimes 
what's going on. And I, I feel like maybe this is the opinion of many politicians who have not had a, a direct involvement with diseases that are treatable with it. I have to say that, that this is probably one of the most troublesome parts of understanding the government's position is that um, we have what's called a therapeutic index in all drugs, which is the ratio of um, beneficial effects to toxic effects, basically. So if, you know, if it takes a, um, a dose of one to help you and a dose of two to hurt you, that's a really narrow therapeutic index. And we have drugs that are like that, where twice the, twice the amount of a normal dose can actually be toxic. Um, I don't know that there is a toxic dose uh, of marijuana. I've never, in, I've been practicing emergency medicine for 20 plus years. I have never seen an overdose of marijuana. I've never seen somebody who um, presented with uh, significant marijuana side effects. Um, I'm sure there's an awful lot of usage going on in the community, and yet, in spite of all of the other um, patients that we see with significant side effects from both pre prescribed and unprescribed drugs and overdoses and abusive drugs and all of the other things. I've never seen a patient in all of my years who presented primarily with symptoms of marijuana overdose. So there's probably uh, very few, if any, drugs that have the kind of therapeutic index that uh, marijuana does in terms of uh, toxic effects. Medicinal marijuana helped me um, considerably because it uh, alleviated any, uh, most of my feelings of uh, nausea and, uh, and physical discomfort recovering from severe chemotherapy use. I did not feel as though I had any negative kinds of uh, side effects other than an improved appetite and improved sleep and uh, reduced anxiety. Um, I cannot, I cannot remember anything negative about taking marijuana during those, those, during that time of chemotherapy use. But um, I think we're talking about a very different issue now, and that is uh, what are the actual, you know, damaging effects of marijuana, and if there are some, they would come out if we could do some research on it. But the studies right now just uh, don't provide any, any information to suggest that there are uh, legitimate um, issues in terms of toxicity for marijuana. The issue for medicinal marijuana should only be between the physician and the patient. The problem is that the government is kind of reaching right now. If I didn't have this available to me, um, I think that the, the treatment process would have gone a lot slower. Um, it would have taken a lot longer to recover in between chemotherapy treatments. I would have had to have stayed in the hospital a lot longer. I think for cancer patients it's good for an anti-medic. It makes you stop from throwing up. It actually helps them increase their appetite, which is good, because when you're having cancer and you're on chemotherapy, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a decreased appetite. You need some energy, so it's gonna help with that. Um, so I think that, again, the majority of physicians that I've spoken to who, who want to talk about it, um, would support the legalization of medical marijuana. Um, I don't see a lot of them looking at this, at, and I don't look at this, as an overwhelming issue. I mean, it doesn't affect a lot of my patients. Um, but as I've said to other people, if it's you, um, if you're the one on chemotherapy, and you're the one that is wasting away, and you're the one that it benefits, then um, you know the numbers of people in the community affected really doesn't matter. You know, it's 100% for you. And that's my concern, is you know, the, the well-being of each individual patient that I see. And I just feel it's my obligation to, uh, to say what needs to be said. Um, I, am a, I am a person who is trained in these areas. Uh, I think that it's, it's the right of the public to hear from people who do, um, who do treat patients and um, are willing to speak and say, say what is in the literature. Please. If not, like I said, not for me, for those that are terminally ill, allow the use of marijuana. It's so much safer than these chemicals they keep prescribing for us that are, are, are worsening what little bit of quality of life that we have with these diseases. Anybody who's been on any serious medication knows the sort of side effects you get with most pharmaceuticals. I certainly have been through the uh, ringer on those. And compared to those, even the psychoactive side effects of marijuana are really not that severe. They're bad, I hate them, I don't like them, 
but compared to some of the other things I've been through, including psychoactive side effects of the medications I've been on, it's really a, a much lower order of magnitude. Yeah, 